Well, the guys kind of talked about the rotation for this weekend, but if you want to kind of dive into that a little bit. About the what? The pitching rotation. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, we've had some great competition throughout the fall and the preseason. Uh, as I stated a few weeks ago, you know, we had about six pitchers that we were building up their pitch count. And, um, you know, when you have these first few weekends, it takes a number of guys because, you know, nobody's going to go out there and throw six or seven innings. You know, you're kind of chopping games up to do everything you can to do to win the one in front of you. So, uh, you know, this weekend, O'Connor, Blanco, and Wolfolk are going to be our three starters in that order. And uh, we've got a ton of confidence in all three of those guys, as well as the pitchers that are coming in after them. And so they each uh, will take pride in getting us off to a great start, but it's as much about the guys coming in and after them as as they are because uh, you know those guys will be pitching the back half the game but uh, all three of those guys have done outstanding and and uh, you know we're excited to, to roll them out this weekend who are guys I guess that were in that competition that yeah. you might see kind of play a factor because you always say like you sure. never start the year the same when yeah. you end it well I, I tell you there's there's a, a, a number of them uh, there's a first year by the name of Bryson Moore that um, had a nice fall and a very very good uh, preseason so he's going to be a real weapon at least out, uh, starting out out of our bullpen and kind of uh, long and short relief and, and um, Kevin Jaxel it looks really good as, as a second year as well uh, Bradley Hodges and Nate Savino are a little bit behind on pitch count, and so that's why we felt it was best to, uh, yeah, yeah, Joe Savino, <laughs> darn it. We got you. Um, so yeah, so, um, you know, Savino, I, I need to stop using their first name, Savino and Hodges are a little bit behind. Um, you know, Hodges will be used this weekend in more of a relief role. So, you know, there's there's a collection of them, six or seven guys that we feel can do good things uh, from an extended outing type standpoint. And, you know, as I said, uh, over the years we've done things you know, maybe not traditional at times that, uh, you know, you want somebody to get you off to a good start. But essentially these games, the first few weekends, you're kind of cutting the game in half and you need two guys each to go out there every game and, and pitch with length. And I believe that we have that. How much, if anything, changes when you're opening up the phone? Uh, you know, a little bit. Usually we'd be packing up today, uh, getting ready to travel tomorrow. Uh, it, it's actually really nice that we're opening up here at home. It worked out. The weather looks like it's going to be uh, fine for us to play here in Charlottesville. And um, we got very, very fortunate with that. And, you know, it's just nice, especially how we ended the season last year in this stadium. Uh, the electric environment, our fans were outstanding to be able to play the first you know, four games here at home is really great, not only for our team, but also for our fans. Anthony Stefan said he's learned how to play left field. Yeah. He said it's kind of been a crash course right. this summer. What have you seen from him? Well, Anthony Stefan really stepped up last year for us offensively and swung the bat great in our DH spot. We sent him out this summer to play in the Northwoods League, and he did a terrific job playing left field and learning the intricacies of playing the outfield and played there all fall and all the pre preseason. He's done a terrific job and turned himself into a really high quality left fielder. So, you know, you're going to see him out there on, on Friday and I know he's excited and, but most importantly, his bat really plays in our lineup and makes a big difference. But it's nice to know that, you know, he has the ability now to play the outfield and that allows us to do some other things in the DH spot. Of course, Hofstra doesn't maybe have the brand that some yeah, of sure. these other teams that you guys are going to play in the, the next week in Jacksonville. How do you make sure these guys aren't underestimating them or any opponent throughout the season? Well, I'll tell you, you know, the, in the game of baseball, any anybody can win every any game. And a lot has to do with that pitcher that's standing on that pitching mound, right? And so we have uh, the highest level of respect for every opponent that we play. Uh, listen, I know uh, that Hofstra is very well coached. Um, they, they return three key players in their lineup that are all preseason conference players uh, this year. And so uh, they're tough kids uh, from the Northeast. We have a lot of those as well. And so we know that what that's like. And so we're, we're just focused on us coming out and playing high quality baseball and continuing to get better. It seems every year you see some big sophomore jumps from freshmen who yeah. played a lot in sure. the first season. 
how much are you looking for that from this group of sophomores, both position players and pitchers? Yeah, this second year class for us is a really, really good class for sure. And, you know, when you, when you have position players like Henry Godbout and Harrison Didowick, I think those two players with the all the experience they got last year are going to be integral in our lineup uh, every day. And then that core of pitchers, right? Um, starting out with O'Connor, starting on Friday, but um, you know Blanco's going to start Saturday. Bradley Hodges, Kevin Jaxel, you know, right on down the line, there's a number of them. So that's typically when you see in college baseball these players emerge. They have good freshman seasons. They kind of get their feet wet, and this is the year you kind of see them take off and. All of those guys and others, I think, are going to be huge contributors to our success. What's the value in having Salky, Anderson, O'Farrell yeah. when you have some freshmen you'll rely on this year? Those guys have been through really well. Yeah, they have. Um, you know, when you're talking about the likes of O'Farrell and Anderson and Casey Salky and Anthony Stefan and guys like that that have, that have been in the lineup a lot over the last two years, you know, it can take the pressure off a couple of the young first years that might just be starting out their college baseball experience. And that's what great leadership does. They, they show them the way every day in practice and then they perform in the game. And uh, those young guys with talent, they, they follow. And uh, we certainly have some guys that are gonna uh, do that for sure. How do you balance maybe the, the mindset of, you know, you wanna get back to Omaha, where 186 is plastered everywhere, then also making sure that guys are, are focused on the opponent at hand? Yeah, well, you know, certainly every season starts out for every college baseball program. Their goal is to get to Omaha, Nebraska to have a chance to compete for a national championship. And, you know, that's what we want to do as well. That said, we've had the conversations with the players about what that looks like. What do you have to do on an everyday basis and not take any game for granted? Because all of those stack up to have opportunities at the end of the year to like host a regional and super regional. So uh, every game counts. And last year's team did a great job with that to go 25 and 0 in non-conference play is just remarkable. And that helped lead us to the opportunities we had at the end of the year that eventually helped us get to Omaha. Didowick and Whalen, you got kind of two different profiles in center field. Yeah. They kind of competed against each other. Well, I tell you, I, I, I love this. It's, it's not too often you have two really high caliber center fielders and Bobby Whalen and Harrison Didowick. And, uh, you know, both of them can go out there and play center field, play very well. And they're vo both really good, um, you know, offensive players as well. So it's been a, a great competition between the two of them. Both of them are going to have opportunities to play out there. You know, you also could see at times Harrison Didowick play left field and Anthony Stefan DH, right? And so it's nice to know that you have a lot of great options. And as the season goes along, things happen, right? So depth in our position players is critical in order to endure an entire college baseball season. It feels like you've got a lot of options at the DH spot. You we know, do. With Anthony moving out to left field. Yeah. What, uh, just kind of, what are some guys that you think are... Well, certainly we have options with, uh, with having two catchers, and Jacob Ferenc and, and Ethan Anderson. Uh, Anderson can also go to first base. You know, Henry Ford, a first year, is going to be incredibly impactful in, in our lineup. So he's an option to play first base in DH as well. And, you know, Aiden Teal's another one that's a left-handed hitter that is going to do a lot of pitching for us and going to be a valuable member out of our bullpen. But he's somebody that had a ter terrific fall and um, is, is vying for those opportunities as well. So there's a lot of great options and great competition. With, with Jack O'Connor, where has he improved most last year? Well, I think, you know, Jack O'Connor is a, a, a year wiser, you know, and getting 65 innings last year and starting in our rotation all year in conference play uh, gives a young man a lot of confidence. He went through a lot of battles last year and, and hung in there and pitched really well for us. And, you know, so it's more of an experience thing. And I think his stuff is a little bit sharper. The fastball is a little bit crisper on a consistent basis. And he knows you know, what, what does he need to do to give us a consistent chance to win on Friday? And, and that's what experience does. And I'm excited to see this year's version of Jack O'Connor.